Welcome everyone to today's podcast episode. You're listening to the Home Design Podcast. My name is Adam Case, your host, and we aim to educate, inspire, and connect South Florida with the industry authorities within their trade. Today, we're gonna be diving into the truth behind interior design, international influences, and the latest design trends that are available to homes today. All with Josiane Raphael of Eviton Interiors. Hi, Adam. How are you? I'm doing great. All right. Well, well, first of all, thank you for being here today. I'm excited to dive into this. You know, I've been seeing your work. I mean, you've been doing work all around the world. Yes, it's been going on for a while. <laughs> it's, yes. been, it's, it's been going on for a while. I mean, you not only are you an interior designer, but an architect and you bring a different perspective to home design, home living. Um, but before we dive into all of these extensive and difficult questions all day but no we're gonna ask the hardest question to start who is Josiane Raphael? <laughs> so Josiane um, was born in Cameroon and um, studied architecture um, in, in Paris but before that I think that it started when I was three years old my mom keeps telling me this story where I just uh, she was changing her um, the bed sheets and I took my box of crayon and then I started drawing on them because to me it was the biggest piece of paper that I've ever seen. Right. <laughs> so of course I get spanked, but uh, that's how I think this interest in uh, maybe creating, I didn't even know, that's how we started. So uh, it's uh, always a very nice reminder. And I, will, I have also to say that um, I think it's a gift really that, um, that God gave me. Um, because I've always been like that, just designing, drawing, and interest in you know in doing something that doesn't exist and bring it to into existence, and that's how I landed starting uh, architecture in Paris. And uh, the year that I was graduating, we partnered with a school that was doing interior design. Okay. And I jumped into it too, so I did you know extensive studies uh, as an architect and interior designer. That's how I started. And, and just to clarify for, you know, people that are listening, you know, the difference between architecture, interior design, you know, obviously there's a lot of similarities, synergies, everything, but what would you say that difference, main differentiating factor is? I think the main difference being an architect, we just pretty much build a house, right? you know, structurally, um, architectural elements, everything. And interior designer, we make that house, we turn it into a home. That's really to me the difference because we're going to get into your story, into what, who you are in textures and things like that. That's really where, you know, the, the difference is. I love that because what we say the home show is, is this is where your house becomes a home. Exactly. And it's true. I mean, that is, you know, everyone is focused on if they're building a house, remodeling a house, everything. But really the design component is what turns that house which is a figure into an individual's home. Um, you know, so, you know, that is so special and it's something that is so important for people to realize the difference just between a house and a home um, yes. as well. So, you know, so how long have you been in the industry? So I've been doing this for, I would say 34 years this year. And um, it's been really a um, tremendous um, uh, blessing and joy because you're able to, come from something that doesn't exist, listening to people's story, listening to their vision, right. and turn it into something you know that you can see, you can touch, you can feel, and also make them happy when they go to their home. It's just you know, a very a, a treat for me every day. Absolutely, and the thing is, like you have all of this global knowledge, um, experience, you know, I mean, the fact that, you know, where you studied in Paris and everything and doing projects all over the world, you know, what does it mean to you as far as having all of that experience and how it really affects and how it, you know, changes your perspective for design and things like that? Because we hear it every day, you know, what we're seeing today here in the U.S., it's been happening for a while in Europe and other parts of the world. <laughs> exactly. I think um, the Ibotan um, interiors right now, what we, all the things that I've been witnessing to, seeing, um, my travels, um, even when I was a student, and then after working on those very high-end presidential palaces, you know, we travel a lot uh, over Africa, uh, in Paris, doing those huge, you know, mansions. You just built, you built a library of things, right. of shapes, of uh, textures, of uh, 
um, just like emotions. And that's what really it's a plus for me because that makes it my vision more global. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and the possibilities because, exactly. I mean, having the opportunity to start with projects like that, yes. seeing, you know, how architecture and design is pushed to the max to really achieve, you know, these incredible, you know, structures, designs, everything that goes into these, I mean, palaces and, and mansions yes. all around. It was inter interesting because it was project where we had no budget per se. You know, right. we had budget, but it was really big budget. Right. And your creativity can really be just endless. Right. And that also is uh, one thing. Another thing was when we do big, big project like that, in order to present to the client, we had maybe a window of what of uh, two hours right. to present a hundred thousand square foot, you know, um, space. So it just helps you to narrow, you know, ex immediately based on what I'm hearing, this is what we can use. So you're basically kind of shutting down all the selections and you get to something essential. Right. And that really is a process. Absolutely. And, you know, we're going to be diving into budgets and things like that throughout this conversation. But I want to take a, just a quick step back mm -hmm. in, to Ebiton Interiors, like mm -hmm. the meaning of it, um, because, you know, you have, you know, personal influence, um, inspiration, you have global you have local but all of the meanings and everything that goes into what you do and practice every single day well the name Ibotan stemmed from my grandmother okay so my grandmother came to i was still in living in france and she had uh, to go to surgery for a cataract and um i took her to the airport and she was in her 90s really oh, wow. in the 90s and um, I took care of it because she couldn't see when she came, you know, because she, both eyes were just needed surgery. So once we did uh, the first, before we did the first eye, she would always thank me, you know, every day because I was taking care of her, like my, my youngest kid, actually. Uh, and when she got the first eye, she kept just send, telling a word every time, every day. And I was at a point when I was starting Ibotan. And um, I'm like, something, there's a name that I'm hearing every day. I asked my mom, how do you write this name? And she told me how to write it, right. uh, but I knew the meaning. So she would bless me every day. It was like, okay, I bless you for the work that you're doing. Right. And we say in my native language, Ibotan. And that's how Ibotan, you know, the name came. Amazing. And up to today, it's like a blessing because, you know, we transform people's life, right. we do things. And um, it's been a company where I really want to have, you know, the values, you know, integrity, uh, loyalty, uh, generosity, um, because, and just joy because this is what it's all about your home absolutely yes no one i love that because you know you know when when there's meaning behind a name behind a brand behind the everyday mm -hmm. you know it's something that is important for the people who are also hiring you to understand yes. because you know that that's like your mission statement that's like yes. who you are what you do what you practice and, and then with that being said welcome to south florida where it's like the, the place of confusion of who to trust <laughs> and things like that so i mean it's so important because of your values and, yes. and what you do yes so um the fact that you have all of this experience you know obviously you know from you know africa to europe to new york to here in mm -hmm. south florida when you're working with these different clients in the perspective of, of seeing so much mm -hmm. and being able to blend these different design styles and bring something to homes that they might not even be envisioning or even know exists, mm -hmm. um, what, what, what is like your process, you know, as far as how you can take all of these experiences and bring it to somebody? Because a lot of people, they probably, you know, they have an idea and they might show you pictures. Mm -hmm but you bring it, you essentially bring it home. Yes, I think that's why the tagline of Ibotan Interiors is expect the unexpected. Right. So we're gonna listen to you. And while I'm listening to you, um, I'm just kind of pretty much envisioning already what to do. Right. So my step is gonna have to be now to bring you back in where I'm already. And that's the fun part, right? really. And I think that's why client also, because you bring something new, let's say, I don't know, it can be wallpaper, it can be a tile, it can be a pattern, something different. 
that is going to pretty make a difference. That's, that's what we do. And that's the job of an interior designer yes. because, you know, you don't hire an interior designer just to do what you want. You know, the whole point is to bring it further. Well, we, I think that's why I like to listen because um, the job of interior designer is definitely more than just, you know, picking drapes and do this. Is really to put things together. And as an architect too, I'm able to scale things. Right. So I can tell the client, maybe they have a vision of doing something with this, and I'm gonna say, well, I don't think with the space that you have, is gonna happen, right. but we can do this way, we can do that way. And that is really, really helpful. And that's so important because having that architectural background, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people that dream up things of, of what they assume, and especially here and really everywhere when it comes to there, there could be property lines, there's mm -hmm. height restrictions, there's, there's mm -hmm. all different factors that goes into what is possible within, you know, a, a lot, um, or what's existing, or exactly. is it worth it to add on to the home, or is it more cost effective just exactly. to tear it down? Yes. You know, so that perspective, I, I mm -hmm. think, is, is really important for Exactly, clients. because um, there's so much, so many things involved. Let's say you just do kitchen renovation, you're changing things, but you're going to have to involve electrical, you're going to have to involve plumbing, you're going to have to go. So is it worth changing the sink from this place to this one? Why don't we keep it here? So that way it, just, it has to do also with the cost and budget, but it gives me a sense of understanding the scope, right. you know, more globally than just, you know, okay, into designer, we want this, we want to do that. There's so many elements involved. So you know, talking about like, for example, someone might be thinking about just remodeling their kitchen or mm -hmm. their bathrooms or mm -hmm. whatever. Obviously, we all know how that goes. Usually the scope of work starts to grow once you start opening walls and doing things. But what would be your answer to why hire an interior designer? I think a hiring an interior designer is a plus because um, we are expert, you know, right. in that regard. And we are able to guide you um, to tell you what works, what won't work. Uh, we are able to really um, uh, be with you during the entire process because it's really a process from yeah. the first conversation to the end and also manage a lot of things that are behind the scenes that you may not even be aware of. Uh, you know, from let's say or, or ordering furniture and then something we have to inspect the furniture. Right. Is it right? Is something and we have to do all those stuff. And mainly I think to capture the essence you know of your vision right mm -hmm. absolutely and, and the thing is like with all of the i mean you work with materials every single day yes. i mean you know if someone's hiring say just a contractor to mm -hmm. remodel their mm -hmm. kitchen they're essentially going to do more or less what they're asking for mm -hmm. where you might know better solutions because you've seen and you worked with so many different things you know so um there's so many important things. And I think there's a negative connotation is for, or, or misunderstanding to most of the market as far as why hire designers. Yes, unfortunately, because I think, you know, um, I mean, in France, for example, uh, in, uh, when I'm, you know, what I studied, I cannot, my being called an interior designer, I had to go to those, you know, five years. Right, absolutely. Otherwise I can't be called even like that. So I feel like there's a lot of people may have a sense, you know, of style and aesthetic and things like that. Right. And they can definitely be helpful. But when, when you hire us, we are really going to make sure that things are also made to code. Right. Uh, that they make, you know, the specs are, you know, made. And also the way that the, the, the things are done, the tile in the bathroom cannot only be installed in the drywall. Right. You have to do different things. So that's why pretty much need our help. You yeah, know? and also not for people to be confused. I mean, there you know, there's a client for everyone, but the difference between an interior decorator and a designer, mm -hmm. there is a differentiating a factor. How do we differentiate that? Well, that is gonna be based on your credentials. Right. So if you ask, you can ask the, the, the interior designer, or what did she study, graduate, does she have you know, credentials? That's how you're gonna make the difference. Right. Um, to me, uh, I feel like at the, at, the, at the stage, at the point where I am, I've seen a lot. Yeah, I'm <laughs> and, sure. And uh, sometimes it's just like you know, they just I feel like I'm called like the the doctor after death because <laughs> the, there's already a mess, and right. then they call okay, Josiane, can you try to help us this? And then unfortunately, it's gonna cost you more because right. you have to redo everything. But you know, it's you just have to. I think the homeowner has to really dig and ask the right questions. And and starting correctly from the start because from the start. you know it is more challenging where well 
there could have been a lot that w could have prevented a situation yes. if you were working with the right person. Yes, that's really a key. So talking about hiring, yes. you know, what does that even look like? Like what should people, what, what, what questions should people ask or what should they know when they're going into that hiring process? Because essentially they're going to start interviewing mm -hmm. put businesses and, and designers or, you know, put to, to potentially step into their home, essentially be a part of their family for mm -hmm. a period of time. Mm -hmm and yes. have a successful project so there's two ways the first um route is referrals right so at ebertan we have a lot of referrals so we did it we designed something for clients then they refer their friends and you know relatives and things like that so that's usually you can that you have seen already the work right so you know what we're capable of the classic uh, traditional way is to do, do your own work really it's really about doing your own work and um narrow down who you feel match, you know, with what you have in mind, right. um, uh, vision-wise, style-wise, and also budget-wise, because right. it, you know it matters, and call, ask questions, and then are you charging for the consultation? Um, what is involved in your fees? Uh, how? What is the process? Uh, do we, so all those type of questions, and how long have you been there? Can you send us, um, you know, referrals? Right. And then we can call those people and see, you know, what they did. That would be for me the traditional way to do this. Absolutely, because you know the thing is, you know, it's okay to ask yes. the structure, the pay mm -hmm. structure, because you know there are a lot of yes. situations where people just don't know, and then they get into the project and they're mm -hmm. not sure. But you know, is there like a standard accepted pay structure when working with a designer? I'm not going to speak for everyone because I feel like to me at this stage in my career for 34 years, I'm at a point where I don't take on certain projects right. because I have to just uh, have a, a, you know, a certain budget. Right. Um, not because I am undermining, you know, the small project because I still do small projects, you know, for a client that did something and then they have the kids who are doing this. I'm going to, I'm going to take that on. But uh, the, the, the amount of hours that is put together when we do a presentation, right. that can last maybe three hours presentation or two hours, but behind the scene, we've been working probably like, I don't know, uh, 40, 50 hours on this. Absolutely. And that's how, where people need to understand the value of this. And also respect, you know, the uh, expertise of, you know, whoever you're working with. Uh, if I'm an entry level interior designer, yeah, my fee are not gonna be the same as, right. you know, uh, what I'm doing now. So this is where, it's really personal. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and you're right, because experience, that's what people pay for. Yes. You know, experience, the amount of projects, the type of projects. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, it all balances out because inexperience can bring other challenges. Yes. And the experience can speed up the process. Exactly. Can get to the right solutions. Yes. So talking about, you, you mentioned, you know, obviously being selective also with mm -hmm. clients. Mm -hmm. It goes both ways. So there's designers, interior designers that are listening to this as far as, you know, what project, what should I look for for red flags? You know, because I'm sure you have those experiences as well. Like, oh, if I, if I knew about this before, what this homeowner, how they acted or what their expectations were or demand of your time. I'm getting calls probably at strange hours or whatever it might be. There's also a respect there. What can you say to the designer as far as every single project is not necessarily for you? Yes, I think um, to me, the red flag is usually because I listen a lot. <laughs> right. You know, I listen. <laughs> the first time I meet uh, even was so everybody called, listen. Good. <laughs> listen here. <laughs> yes, I, I'm listening to everything and um, I'm going to ask a few questions and I'm also going to ask the key question. What is your budget? Right. What? you don't want to go over. And if you tell me, well, I don't know really because I don't get a sense, you're not telling me the truth right. because you, everybody does his own work. You know, when you go and buy a house or even you want to buy, I mean, we ladies, we shop. Right. So it's going to be like, okay, I'm today I'm, I want to just, you know, treat myself. You're going to put a limit on, on what you're doing. Right. So to me, I'm a little bit, I have to understand. So what I will do when I go back to the office, we will send you our terms of service right everything is really clearly described if you are okay with the way that we work 
then we can work together. Right. But if there's like two, three, four points, you're going to come back before we even start anything. To me, that's a big, big red flag. Right. And also wanted me to design or to give you a concept without even put something like um, a retainer that can just cover, you know, our time that we just put the, the mood board together. To me, it's a red flag. Right. So things like that. But, you know. And thank God I didn't, I don't have, you know, I didn't have a lot of those. Yeah, that's good. Well, cause you listen well <laughs> yes. and, and you know, like, because there's like you mentioned, there's always red flags, yes. um, you know, but going through all of these processes, hiring designers, you know, we've already learned the benefit of you and the experience mm -hmm. and what you've done, mm -hmm. but are there other specific benefits as far as what somebody would achieve by hiring you and your team? Yes, I think because we also have a vision on the long term. You know, you may be ready this season to just, you know, you know what I have in mind um, because you haven't, you're just doing, you know, the kitchen. But then as your family is going to grow, you may think, you know, about maybe expanding that family room and things like that. So what I will do is that if I, we talk about it, we can do the project knowing that it's going to be phase out, phase right. two, phase three, even if in a year or something. It just is the process instead of doing something and then oh no now we want to do this and then you have to tear down what we did what here. you already did no yeah because it's on yeah. it's and that's so important because there yes. are a lot of people where they, after a project they're like you know i wish i did it this way yes. rather than just saying okay i want to do this area first mm -hmm. and then go here but when you talk to a designer and, mm -hmm. and you know such as yourself they're like, well, if you want to do that, we advise you to do this first. Exactly. You know, we can anticipate things. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, yes. and that's why being open, honest and on, on just having the conversation. Yeah. And really communication is really key. Communication, right. trust. Um, trust is really key because I understand that some clients, you know, when I go in, in someone's house, um, I see it finish. I don't right. even know how to explain it. I see it finish. <laughs> what it could be. Exactly. Yeah. So then, you know, just have to trust me. And, and talking to that point, is there something that you see in homes where stands out to you that for, you know, a normal individual just that is a homeowner and they have their dreams. But when you see something that it just triggers inspiration or something like that, is there is there a part of a home that you really love to design around? Hmm. I think it's. Like I said, is your home is a storyteller, right? So you, you have specific connection with some part of the house because maybe this is where is your place. You have a, you know you have kids, and this is my little retreat. Right. So I will probably get inspired, but I don't know if I have a specific one because to me everything is linked to your emotion or story or what you want to see at that right. at that time. So I don't really have a specific one, but I love to do laundry, you know, laundry okay. rooms. Yeah. Because laundry is so boring. I can't let my wife hear you. Well, she's going to hear me. <laughs> right. So it's so boring that you want to make that spot right. very funky. Right. Absolutely. And I love to do that. That's amazing because yes. we are seeing more and more of these, yes. you know, laundry spaces mm -hmm. really be an incredible place. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've even seen laundry rooms with like, um, like pet washes and, exactly. and set, like showers yeah. and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you can do have something really cool and yeah. that makes you want to go back and enjoy. I mean, not want to go back, but at least enjoy the time Absolutely. while you've been there. Without a doubt. <laughs> exactly. Um, so talking about that and, and we've been, you know, we've been talking about, you know, all of these budgets and things like that when you walk into a space and somebody who thinks their budget is a number, but knowing the reality because mm -hmm. there's plenty of homeowners yes. that don't know the, the reality of they might be just accounting for okay cabinets are going to cost x amount mm -hmm. you know the the countertop and lighting and you know there's so many different elements that get it's into all parts of the home mm -hmm. whether we're talking about a living area or we're talking about a kitchen or bathroom or entry for your area whatever it might be um you know once you get that budget do you just immediately just try to reverse engineer to fit that budget or is it more so having the real conversation of, you know, if you're looking to achieve what I think you want, mm -hmm. realistically, this is what you you should be looking at. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, definitely. We have this conversation because uh, like you said, some don't really have a sense because it may be their first time doing that. Right. So I will guide them and say base. And then there's a thumb of rule too. If you, let's say you have, um, your your house the cost 
the, whatever you're going to be spending is also linked in the value of, you know, so if you're building a house and let's say the house is 1.5 million, you have to expect to spend at least $150,000 in all those interior design, furniture, and things like that. Right. That's kind of a term of, of rule. But now, if we're doing renovation... Is that like based on a, a general percentage? Yeah, general yeah. percentage. Okay. But then, so if you, you, you having, you, you're buying a, a house that's $3 million, and then you want to do some interior design work, and then you said, I just want to spend 100000 I'm not going to be able to do that. Right. I'm just going to be really honest, because um, not only the space, the square footage, and all that stuff, is impossible. Right. But also, if you have a, a set budget... I can tell you that with that set budget, this is what we can do. Right. Based on what you think and what I presented to you. But now if we go with the, the entire scope, it's going to probably add up and then let me know what right. you want to do. I do that because I don't want, you know, people need to be comfortable, you know, when they they have a budget, if that's all they can do right now, let's make it happen. Right. But without compromising, because I don't want to compromise and say, okay, because the budget is a little bit lower, and then I'm going to compromise on the aesthetic, on the on the vibe. I don't want to do that. Yep, absolutely. And that's an important piece because, you know, it's not just having the experience, um, architecturally speaking, mm -hmm. or interior design speaking, mm -hmm. um, but it's also understanding the real estate perspective, mm -hmm. because there is also like, you know, a home is also a business, mm -hmm. um, making sure that whatever the budget also fits mm -hmm. the value of the home mm -hmm. um, and what how the how that increase or what whatever is applied to the home and how it can increase the value mm -hmm. of the home. Of course. Um, so, you know, so there's a lot of those decisions as well. Yes, like bathroom, um, uh, kitchens or the, 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 the space where definitely you can really increase the value. And then now in South Florida, you're outside because outdoor is really an extension of your of your house now. So you, those are the space where you really, really have to think through it because people spend so much time, you know, right. uh, outside and they want to, you know, have as comfortable as inside. Especially post COVID. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it changed. Yes. It changed everything because, you know, honestly, when you look at things and, and we're very fortunate living here in South Florida mm -hmm. because you can't necessarily do this everywhere. But like one of the best areas to add livable square footage exactly. is outside without yes. having to make an, an addition. Exactly. That's really something that I really enjoy doing. And, and, and also we bring in the textures, you know, the outdoor texture now is softer, right. boucle, and it's just really interesting. And what's amazing, like even for the interiors, you know, biophilic design and bringing in the greenery and the natural yes. aesthetics and things like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's incredible. I mean, you're bringing the outdoors in. Exactly. Yep. And, and you get a different feeling with that as well. Um, you know, talking about all of these different, you know, from budgets and design aesthetics mm -hmm. and things like that, would you say that there is any specific design decisions that is truly most impactful to changing, you know, the feel of a home or the aesthetic? Uh, I think the architectural elements are, to me, um, something that can change the feel of the house. And when you say architectural elements, what are you referring so to? So I'm referring, for example, moldings. Do you have like because some some house can be very dated because there's a lot of you know uh, gold and things like that called crown molding and a lot of plaster, a lot of brown, a lot of you know Venetian plaster, like you know you right. know the way they did it 20 years ago. So just tackling those elements. Removing, toning down, and things immediately change already the look, or the vibe of your house. That's something that, um, to me, that's what I'm, you know, referring to architectural elements. And when you're talking about these elements, I mean, this brings me into one of those areas that people love looking up and they want to really understand further trends. Uh, you know, some people yes. love talking about trends. Trends are made. I, trends are really a marketing play to, yes. <laughs> I guess, like, you know. But what's your opinion on design trends? So I don't really follow design trends when it comes to, let's say, colors and things like that. I follow the trends in what is new in the industry, material-wise, you know, sustainable um, things that, you know, they're coming out, which is what we need, you know, for our planet. Um, it's really more focused on the materials okay. aspect. Now, of course, you know, uh, there was a trend where gray was very gray. So I'm not a gray person. Right. So I always, if you are more on the modern aspect of it, I can warm it up with textures and things right. like that. But I'm not really, I, would, I won't say I'm like a trend. I just go by um, 
what you what your story is and right. what you don't like because some people don't like colors some people like colors and i'm going to incorporate that you know in the in the vision are there any new products or materials that you're seeing being introduced to the market that are just like you know that have caught your eye and that you really enjoy working with today so um, um i usually go to you know those um trade shows uh, i do a lot in europe um, okay the, the last one in maison Gabji. so it was a lot of textures you know you have a lot of um like um, on the wall like wall coverings okay um swede yeah, we'll go on the wall coverings uh, we have of course the paneling the wood paneling but now we just rounded them instead of just being straight ones uh, colors in terms of those wood paneling to lightings are also key and um, uh, in terms of fabric is really the one that are performance that's soft right this is really where this is the things that I've seen lately I'm not sure of the actual material but I've been starting I've been seeing it over and over it's mm -hmm. like a very very soft high performance fabric it kind of has like a I don't know, for lack of a better term, like a fluffy uh, texture to it yes, in a way. Yes, I like a boucle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I can see I'm not a designer, but <laughs> but um, you Plastic know, boucle, yeah. okay. And, it, and wallpaper is really in. Absolutely. I mean, wall coverings are transformative. Yes. I mean, it changes a space. Yes. And it's something that I mean, who knew that you know, wallpaper would come back as big as it has? It is really, really big. Yeah. Now, and all textures. What do you see for the future? Would you say that there's any areas that you, that there's like a built up anticipation of other types of materials in other parts of the home um, that you see as possible future trends? I think what I see is more into the style okay. and the future trends, uh, like more eclectic. Okay. You yeah. Know, because we, you know, after during the pandemic, we always, you know, glued into TV. Some, you know, we had to do something. Right. So we traveled. So I see that trend where you sew something, you want to bring it in your house and uh, uh, just material or the textures like a glass, you know, that's uh, stained glass is really also back in or uh, like the, 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 the dining table with this uh, lacquered and then we have a glass on top. So it's more like an eclectic style and okay. also um, vintagey things, you know, are back to just put like some accessories. That's what I see in terms of the trend, in terms of style. Product-wise, not really, but because there's always something new, but it's really the style. And it's how you use it. Yes. You know, because, I've, and, and also like, you know, when you're working with these budgets and homeowners and things like that, when people look at trends, mm -hmm. you know, of, of you know, how, th how things are applied or designed, mm -hmm. it, as a designer, you will probably look at them and say, well, you know, that is a popular style now, but are you going to like that? in two years in yes. five years because when you're making these types of investments you want to be able to live in the space and enjoy it for longer than the next you know short-sighted period exactly. of time that's why the balance has to be done you can do something like that in your study where you can really go wild because the trend is like the mono you know mono right. mono color everywhere which is super cool because it gives you something warm more intimate right. but when it comes to your living room um like to the formal one you want something that is gonna you know timeless right i would say timeless if i had to put a word family room you can be more of course just, you know if you have kids and you know you want to make sure that someone comes it doesn't drop uh, wine on your sofa it's not going to be ruined right. so performancey so you can be a little bit um neutral bring some accents you know during the season if right. it's a holiday you can bring some red or blue whatever you want to do and uh have fun in powder rooms because this is where you know you don't stay there for a long time right so you can do something <laughs> super cool because to me i always call the powder room the business card of your home that's a great way to put it yes i because like that the powder room basically we should reflect everything from your house yeah that's like your elevator pitch exactly. <laughs> you know so it's you like can do something that's great funky. Color, i like that texture uh wallpaper um so i i, I really like doing powder room for and, that reason. and as you're speaking like it just brings perspective to me because a lot of people when they're designing a home they feel like every space has to be similar mm -mm. and it doesn't necessarily have to be that because as you said every space is also its own story and exactly incorporating you know life experiences, if they're traveling, where they're from, mm -hmm. what they enjoy, you know, being able to implement that into, yes. into design, it doesn't have to be like an obvious, oh, this is from there, mm -hmm. but it's pulling out that exactly. inspiration. Yep, that's, a, that's what I feel like the next trend is really like eclectic, really to me, where you can bring all those elements. Absolutely. Um, so when thinking about interior design, uh, there's a lot of great, great designers out there. Um, 
exclusion or approachability is mm -hmm. something that we as the home design and remodeling show and all of our efforts and and educating and bringing the best professionals to the market and, and really just bring this information what would you say to somebody that they don't know better and we and we've already kind of mm -hmm. touched on it but as far as the approachability perspective to interior designers mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you know you only like if you have a certain dollar value of home that a designer is for you or if you don't have that a designer is not for you like what can you say to that as far as making interior designers more approachable in the sense of the value for all homeowners i think people should not be um should just be truth to themselves to me that's really key um you have a certain dollar amount that you want to spend and don't be afraid because there's you know, room for everybody. Right. I know that I'm trying to be more selective just for the sake of just, you know, productivity and things like that. But I still take on, you know, project where there's a connection right. to me. So I don't feel they should be um, um, hesitant of on reaching out. They should. And what's the worst? They're going to say maybe no. Right. Exactly. But at least try because I've, I've got some calls like that. And at the end, it was like, oh, my God, I never imagined that you would, you know, take on this project. I did because there was something that I can relate to. And I said, you know what? I really um, I'm going to make, you know, this work for you, even though uh, we don't really take, you know, uh, right now at this time, uh, this type of project. And it turned it to be something very amazing. You know, you just make people happy. And this is what, you know, to me, I feel it is. So people should not be feeling comfortable, but they right. should just know that you're also saving, you know, your, uh, money when you hire someone who knows, you know, what it's all about. Absolutely. Yes. 100%. And that's yeah. like the common theme, like experience. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it saves money it, and it brings a whole different level exactly. of everything you're looking yeah, to achieve. Because it can only be maybe just changing the walls because some people, you do, we don't have to do the entire remodeling, but just adding uh, colors or changing the entire vibe. Um, if you have already existing floors, we can do something that you can just reuse those, maybe just restaining them. So there's so many things that can be done within that type of budget. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Would you say that there's like a hierarchy as far as where budget should be allocated? Um, yes, I would say that. Uh, I think to me, um, there are some priorities in, in, you know, in the design thing. So if you are thinking about homeowner want to do, okay, I want to redo my kitchen and then I want to do this family room and then I want to do this one. So what are you thinking about staying in this house forever? That's the first question. Right. If you're thinking about selling it, maybe in the next four or five years, let's start with the kitchen. Okay. Absolutely. Then we're going to go into the other room. If you feel like, okay, I'm just going to be here for a while. So where do you spend more time? Why is the reason why you're doing this? Then we can prioritize, you know, the spaces. But it's key. If you're thinking about selling the house in the future, there's some area that you definitely need to start with. And because other, you'll get that immediate exactly. return. And the other one, we can just do cosmetic, um, you know, uh, design. It can be a, a paneling on the wall, or giving like character or, right. or accent wall, things like that. Absolutely. Because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and to your point that you already brought up is the fact that, a great way to to bring in you know different elements is mm -hmm. is through the furnishings through accents through yes. things like that um but you know when somebody obviously there's people listening to this and be like you know what how do i how do i contact josie ed and, and and have her design my home um to get them familiar with what your process looks like what does your design process look like so design process is first a call okay. it can be a call or you could just we set up an appointment and we're going to listen to everything that you have to say. Then after we listen to that, then we're going to send you a proposal where we said, okay, after listening to everything, we would like, we were going to do like a mood board that pretty much summarize our entire conversation. And that mood board is just one page. And of course, there's like a, a consultation fee. Um, and then um, we just show that to you like via Zoom or in person. And if you're okay with that, then we send you pretty much like, you know, term of agreements and, you know, what the process will be and uh, what the budget and how we, it goes. And we start pulling everything together, right. uh, floor plan. Uh, if you don't have existing floor plans, we're going to draw them. Um, we do uh, all the mood boards, uh, textures, and then we're going to 
you know, you're going to meet with us. We have those amazing acrylic trays where it's just per room or per space and everything is organized and you can see immediately, you can picture yourself in the space. That's really what we do. And then when we're okay with that, then if it's about ordering material, we do that. Or for furniture, we order furniture. While we are tackling maybe kitchen renovation or the floor and things like that, those things are being made. And we just, you know, update you and uh, we follow up closely and voila. Sounds like an experience. Voila. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the journey. Yeah, and, and throughout your journey of all of your experiences, you have your own collection. Yes, 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 yes. Tell us about that. So, um, how did it start? So, it's Maison et Botan, uh, which is Maison, which is in French, say house. Okay. I'm just putting in 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 the, in the in the front of Ibotan. So it's like a house of Ibotan, a home of Ibotan. So it started with um, when I started working on those projects um, in Washington D.C. Okay. I designed a lot of um, embassies. So embassies, you know, when you go into embassy, you are in a foreign country. Right. So what do you see, what do you want to see without even traveling to the country? Right. So I had to incorporate the culture in rugs, in uh, fabrics, in uh, on the floor. And and it was so very interesting. And before that, if I go back, um, I designed a dinnerware line okay. that was sold in all Neiman Market stores. Oh, wow. Yes. And... Um, just bringing in that element of culture that you travel, you saw something, but bringing it in more like modern uh, settings, like right. those place settings were done in Limoges, in France. So you can, it was really interesting to do that. So after doing that with the embassies, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna start doing this because I have drawings back, I don't know how many years. I have those little books. I always have notepads. I right. note everything. I draw, I sketch everywhere. and. I decided to launch the line um, last year because I was always looking for, for example, leather. I like to do collages, okay. meaning you have a different texture in the back and another texture in the front. So every time that I wanted to do that, it was only solid leathers. I'm like, why don't you have printed leather? Why can I do, why can I see that? So I said, right. you know what, I'm just going to do it. So I started doing my printed leather line and just been amazing since then. And I'm doing uh, the leather line. I'm going to introduce the wallpaper because the vignette at the show is going to get um, our... And this will be your wallpaper? Yes, it's going to be my That's wallpaper. Exciting. And uh, uh, we're going to extend that to the fabrics and tiles. Amazing. I'm stacking tiles now too. Amazing. Yes. And, and that's the thing. I mean, because tile is like art. Like, it, you know, it's art. and art is a, you know, part of the story. It's yes. a great way to, in colors and, and shapes and everything, it helps tell that story. Exactly. So you mentioned the show. Yes. What we can expect to see. Uh, well, you can expect the unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's pull, let's start. When you, obviously, we had a conversation. Yes. Um, and we were honored to, you know, have you as a part of this upcoming show in Palm Beach. When you sat down to think about it, where did your inspiration come from? It really comes from my, I would say, my travels. And, um, and I don't want to cut you off, but I want to explain a little further. So the designer show house. So you're used to designing for people for yes. their homes. Mm -hmm. This is your opportunity to step outside the box and yes. design for what you can do. Yes. So sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely. You're totally right because you have to go. Uh, when I go to people's home, I listen to their story and then I just implement it in design. But this time I feel like I want to be able to they're going to see me. Right. It's really me with a lot of the cap uh, capabilities, um, um, travels that I, you know, did um, that kind of expect and expected, which is really our tagline. Um, and um, yes, I think it's going to be super interesting. <laughs> is there any little pieces that you could show us? Like, is it going to be a, a modern twist to it? Is it going to be timeless is it going to be color any colors any any teasers <laughs> oh, i would say the teaser is going to be hermes okay i like it's, it it's hermes note that <laughs> <laughs> so you know obviously you know you've done a lot of projects you know we've talked about you know everything from palaces to embassies to all types of homes is there any one project in particular that stands out that is your favorite and that could be for a lot of different reasons. It could have been the most challenging that you overcame obstacles. It could be incorporating the most intricate or different materials, whatever that might be to you. 
So that question is really hard because um, it's like asking me which one is your favorite kid. <laughs> I can, you know, so I think um, everyone is really, I would say, my favorite. But there's a few projects where definitely there was a challenge. Like um, it was very traditional, very traditional, heavy. And I'm like, I don't even know if I can do this one because it was so far from my design aesthetic. Right. But I took it as a challenge. And it turned out to be, we, we are finishing, we are on the finishing uh, step on that one. Very interesting. Oh, so this this is current? Yes, that one oh, is wow. current. So it's going to be done by probably in the, in the next month or so. And there's another one um, that I uh, I did a year and a half ago, and it's in Utah. Okay. <clears throat> so that one, I'm not a snow person <laughs> at all. But it was really interesting to bring it, you know, um, it's, it's, it's really one of the ones that I really was excited about. Right. So we're going to, installation is happening in June because it's the same thing, they're finishing the construction. But I was able to do a lot of things like the building, those cabinets, uh, the bathrooms and designs. Um, so that would be the another one. And if I have to go back to a long time ago, yes, it was really when I designed those um, state homes. Okay. Because it was a lot of history. Absolutely. A lot of history. And it's and it's all also preserving the integrity e and of e exactly. that history. History and it's still you know even when I see again some of the pictures I was I was given the opportunity two years ago um, to to go back and it's really mind blowing to see that and it also bring me back to when I started you know my work as an architect because at, at that time when I was working for that firm we. Um, uh, you know, we graduate from architecture, and the first assignment they gave me was to do color rendering. Okay. And I'm like, really? I did all this cool, I'm going to do color <laughs> right. rendering? But for 18 months, I was really in depth of those um, uh, visuals. I would do everything by hand. We didn't have the software right. like we have now. But it told me so many things. You know, the nuances, the level, the things. And I, uh, uh, as of today, I even frame some of them just as a reminder of how patience you need to be. Right. It's a process. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and patience is key, which comes with listening. Yes. <laughs> yes. Would you say that there's a transformational point of your career where like a light bulb went off or something that is like a most memorable moment in your career where things just, you know, changed in any, any way to bring you to who you are and what you're doing today? Um, I think it's, um, it's, it's more personal in the sense that um, I had a lot of health challenges and to see how far, you know, and what I've been able to achieve, you know, to me is, Every day is like, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Puts everything in perspective. Yes. You know, so we've talked a lot about a lot of different areas today. Is there anything that we left out that you want to touch on before we go? I just want to say that I'm really excited to be able to um, showcase, you know, uh, this vignette with, um, you know, the uh, Palm Beach Home Show because, you know, we are in the times of global you know, everything is global. Right. And I can even see that, you know, even with the exhibitors that, you, uh, you know, are going to be participating, that everything, people are, you know, bringing material from all over the world, all over the place. And um, to me, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good, good way. What, what you're doing is amazing because people don't even have a clue right. of, you know, what is out there. And being able to have that in one spot and then adding on top of that, like, you know, a, a section where you can have, you know, into designers uh, expressing, you know, themselves and what creativity means to them and what can also mean to those people is going to be an amazing, amazing time. So that's really, uh, you know, thank you again for this opportunity. And I cannot wait to really to to start putting everything together. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, the it's going to be super fun. <laughs> Absolutely. No, and I appreciate you saying that because, you know, what we see our purpose as is bringing approachability to South yes. Florida home design, home yes. living, showing people the possibilities, showing them what they won't see if, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of people tend to rush the process also. Mm -hmm. They're not going to take the time and drive from showroom to showroom mm -mm. to showroom. It's a lot of time. Yeah, it is. And, and being able to go to a destination to be able to talk with professionals exactly. who do this every day, to see materials, to see how it's put together. And 
you know, really discover before you just become a lead of a company trying to sell them. Exactly. So, you know, we kind of, you know, approachability is what I really love to discuss and bring awareness to because the show is for everyone. Exactly. It doesn't matter if it's a first time home mm -hmm. or if it's someone's fifth home or mm -hmm. if it's their vacation, whatever it might be, the show is for everyone and having individuals like yourself is really what makes it special. Well, I'm really, really humbled, honored, and um, thank you so much for all the support. And uh, it's really exciting. I'm really, really excited. I cannot wait. Absolutely. For, you, for, <laughs> for everyone to be to see what what Ibotan Interiors will have to showcase. A few collection of you know Maison Ibotan. We're launching a few things, and uh, overall, really to for people to be able to dream Absolutely. and know that everything is possible. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well said. And thank you so much for being here today. For our listeners, if they want to reach out to you and contact you, what's the best way? So so the best way is definitely we can go to Instagram. We have uh, Ebotan Interiors and then our website too, ebotan.com. Uh, you can definitely, you know, uh, send us a message. We have a, a little thing where you can say what you want to do. And of course, you know, we're just going to be on the show yeah. uh, for those uh, days. And just don't hesitate, ask questions. And the last thing is that we also are uh, organizing a raffle. Oh, amazing. Yes. And what can they win? Uh -huh. so Aha. <laughs> or is that a win. secret for now? <laughs> no, no. Ebotan Interiors, they can win a free uh, interior design consultation. Okay. Um, then they can also win um, a hide, a rag. They can also win a very interesting French um, art. It's an artist. Okay. Um, that they can win a, a piece of that. They can. There are some other stuff that can win, but yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Amazing! Yes. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> You know, thank you so much for being here. For everybody listening and wondering when the Palm Beach Home Design and Remodeling Show is, it will be May 24th to the 27th. Get your tickets today at homeshows.com. This show is going to be spectacular. This is exactly where home design, home living all comes together in one location. And of course, can obviously meet you and your team. Um, but for all of you listening, thank you so much. We are Florida's premier destination for everything home design and home improvement. Visit all of our home design and remodeling shows in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, as well as Palm Beach. Again, our website, you can get all the information at homeshows.com. Follow us at FL Home Shows. Subscribe to our channel. Get all of the latest in home design and home improvement. But until next time, stay tuned for the next episode. Yay. Yes.